Good morning, everybody, and thank you for the opportunity for uh, being able to present this work today. Um, this is preliminary data, but I will do my best to highlight all the very interesting aspects so far. The title of my talk is The Seroprevalence or Serological Surveillance um, of FMD Transmission in the Kruger National Park um, over a two-year period um, so far. And I'll elaborate more on all the details of this cohort study. There are two aspects to this study. I'll be addressing parts of the cohort study, and there will be other talks on the challenge experiments. So buffalo ecology and behavior physiology is strongly mediated by seasonal cycles. Body condition drops during the dry season and is regained during the wet season when the rain returns and new grass growth. Um, Immunity in the African buffalo varies seasonably in the Kruger Park, and your innate immune responses are stronger in the dry season than in the wet. Um, Trade-offs occur between your immunity to intra- and extracellular pathogens, which are detectable in the dry season, but not in the wet. And as we all know, buffalo are the primary maintenance hosts of FMD, but are clinically do not show FMD or regarded as very mild, and sometimes no obvious signs of FMD occur at all. So consequently, we expect strong seasonal variation driven by resource availability in co-infection patterns and immunity in free-ranging buffalo, which may mediate FMD transmission dynamics. Just a bit of background for bu buffalo recovery. Um, virus has been recovered in field studies from individuals for up to five years. Um, in isolated buffalo herds of between 30 and 100 animals, um, it has been isolated for 24 years. So FMD can perpetuate long-term without the reintroduction from neighboring populations. However, the frequency and title of virus recovered does decrease over time and can be cleared over a 15-month period. Um, significant animals also fail to become persistently infected, um, where the proportion of persistently infected animals falls after reaching a peak in the one- to three-year age group. Serological surveys have shown 98% of all buffalo ex exposed to SAT 1 and 2 and 3 are by the age of two years old. So FMD must maintain a high force of infection in buffalo populations continually. So just one thought about how it is transmitted or maintained within those populations. Given a prolonged annual birth pulse, the virus might be maintained as a typical childhood infection, circulating through new susceptible calves following the loss of protective maternal antibodies. Um, and this is after the age of about three to, to eight months, with your latest born calves of the one year sparking the new epidemic. So preliminary models of FMD dynamics in free-ranging buffalo suggest that calf-to-calf -calf transmission alone is unlikely to result in this long-term persistence, or that your annual epidemics among susceptible calves may be initiated by persistent carriers or novel antigenic variants. So I'll be delving into a few of these aspects. And just to show you this table, um, which very nicely illustrates the different tests, oh, sorry. The different tests that can be run um, in this experiment. So this will be isolating virus and, um, and viral RNA to prove that an animal is either infected, carrier, or recrudescent. You can also look at mucosa antibodies, circulating antibody neutralizing, and viremia. And all of these give us a different picture on what status the buffalo might be. In this particular aspect, I'll be looking at your circulating antibodies um, through liquid phase blocking ELISA that was done on these samples over a two-year period. Just to show you quickly, um, in, the Kruger, in South Africa, this is the map of South Africa, the Kruger National Park lies right up at the top. And it's depicted as red because this is an infected zone in South Africa where the buffalo are, also a little bit now in KZN. Um, the yellow area surrounding it is our protection zone where cattle will be vaccinated against FMD. The dark blue area around the whole perimeter as well as the park um, is your high surveillance area where no um, vaccination takes place, but um, surveillance is important. And then the rest of the country is free with no vaccination. So our study area occurs in the Kruger National Park, in an area here called Sitara, just north of Skakuza. It is a fenced-off camp within the Kruger National Park of about 900 hectares and originally contained a buffalo herd for many years. We kept um, 64 of them about, and in June 2015, we added approximately another 30 animals. So this uh, particular part of information I'll be showing is where we sampled um, the buffalo well, we are sampling the buffalo every two months for three years. This work will show two years of data, and we sample probangs, tonsil swabs, and serum 
um, monitoring the FMD and the herd via serology and molecular techniques. The aim of this particular part of the study is to look at the seroprevalence of FMD in the herd over time. Secondly, to look how variable maternal antibodies are and their drop-off over time. How long do those maternal antibodies last? What predicts antibody levels in the mother? Um, is it the condition of the mother and calf or is it the antibody levels from mother to calf? Okay, so let's get into the data. This is the seroprevalence of the SAT1 data. And Everything here um, is depicted as, for example, one animal is positive out of three animals. Um, so that's what the whole table shows. And this is where you have a liquid phase blocking ELISA of greater than 1.7 titer. Um, so I just want to highlight some interesting aspects. It's the blue line here for the SAT1. And I just want to highlight these two peaks here. So this is where the seroprevalence um, was spiked up. And this upward increase occurred from March 2014 to February 2015 with a high prevalence spike then in February. And there was a decline after that, and again a high prevalence um, that occurred with the second um, spike there. In this particular case, I want to highlight how the second spike um, occurred in the adults where your young ones, calves 6 to 24 months, were actually really low prevalence within this time point. So there are some differences that are occurring uh, where you'd expect um, some differences there, but in this case they were quite low. Uh, obviously, stats will be needed to further um, support this later on. With the SAT2, very different picture that is formed here. This is shown by the, the orange line. And as you can see, the prevalence remains at an almost constant rate of 0.6 to 0.88, with tiny little spikes here and there occurring. Um, low prevalence occurred, interestingly, m during the entire sampling time, with your calves 6 to 24 months having very low prevalence as well as during this time point where it looked like the group of all calves as well as young females were very low prevalence. So it will be interesting now to further investigate the SAT2 pattern to actually see if there has been any incidence levels between individual animals or if this is just a, a picture of maintenance of the SAT2 over time. The seroprevalence for the SAT3 virus was almost very, very similar to what occurred for the SAT1 pattern where you have these ups and downs. Um, however, with the SAT3, you always have a lower prevalence in general compared to the other two. Um, so possibly this is sustained through low level transmission, or there could be possibilities of maybe competition between SAT1 and SAT2 as we found in other, uh, other studies. So this remains um, to be investigated further, but so far very interesting patterns. Oops. So I just want to highlight five animals that I drew from the data. Um, this is not a complete picture of what is happening, but just to show you how we will now be progressing onto looking at individual incidence levels. So I want to highlight, for example, this uh, yellow color one. This is a calf that in the beginning was only um, very young, below six months old. And this red star here shows the maternal antibodies that were obviously elevated at this point, and then they dropped off. And so this blue star here could be a, uh, an example of the first incidence of infection that this animal had. Um, and again, if you look at something like this pinkier color one, this one shows where it dropped off. This is a bit of a much older animal, a 15-year-old animal. So this is not maternal antibodies here. But anyway, there's a spike there and there's a spike there. So this, and this is all above the 1.6 threshold of what we call a positive. So this could be indicative of uh, two incidences, um, but it will remain to be seen through sequencing and through uh, other testing. Is this the same type of virus? Uh, where it's just waning antibodies and therefore getting infected again or recrudescence, or is this actually a novel antigenic variant that has occurred here? Um, similarly, you can see with other um, examples here how you have a different pattern where, for example, this gray one, there's some sort of an incidence up here, possibly, and then it's just sustained all the way through. So just some examples to highlight how we will now have to investigate individual animals. Okay, so now moving on to how variable are your maternal antibodies with time. We looked at the SAT1, 2, and 3, and generally through this one can make a deduction that your age-specific maternal antibodies for each calf are mostly around the age of five to seven months, as you can see the drop-off occurring at this time interval mostly. There are some with exceptions, which are a little bit shorter, and some that are even longer. So it is probably quite variable amongst calves. And then we linked this to... Um, the potential correlation between maternal antibody titers of the calf 
together with the mother's titer for that exact serotype. So we want to try and make the correlation. If your mother has a high maternal anti uh, sorry, antibodies for a certain set, is that the same correlation to a high um, antibody, maternal antibody titer? So we, we did this um, comparison, and what we did here was we looked at the mother's sat one titer with the, the exact calf of hers, sat titer, and we cross-checked that with basically sat one for the calf and sat two for the mother, so that shouldn't correlate, um, and that was our, almost our negative controls. So this data reflects that there is a significant that there is a significant oh, it's one back. Um, this this basically shows a significant correlation between the mother's sat one titer and the calf sat one titer, as depicted there. However, this analysis was done, which is not shown also between your sat two and sat two of calf and mother and sat three, and it did not show a correlation for those. Then we wanted to look at what predicts your antibody levels in the mother. Is it the condition or is it just your antibody levels? And we looked at the calves as well associated with this, and we found that a calf's body condition taken from the first capture was not significantly associated with the FMD titer for the other sets and more driven probably by maternal influence. Condition was also not correlated with age as depicted here. Just some pictures to show the work that we're doing um, in the bush. We use the helicopter for sand parks to do some of the um, darting liquid nitrogen tanks in the field. Quite a challenging um, thing, all of this. And I'm sure Anna will show maybe some more information about the data that we record through contacts and the weighing of the buffalo. So just some interesting pictures. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, we looked at the seroprevalence and the SAT1 fluctuates with peaks um, occurring. Uh, your SAT2 seems to remain quite constant, so this would need to be investigated. Uh, your SAT3 remains low, but still shows the same pattern as SAT1. Maternal antibody titers are correlated to the calf antibody titer for SAT1s. Body condition and age are not related to the antibody. Uh, body condition is not related to the antibody titer or age. And your maternal antibodies seem to weigh in around five to seven months. So the future work is, is what's important coming up now. We are going to be linking um, all these things to the actual incidence of each event, um, establishing true transmission events that might be occurring. Um, we need to then analyze our real-time PCR and virus isolation data uh, together with the serology to be able to differentiate now between your infected, recovered, carrier, and recrudescent animals. And this, just shown here with the pink arrows now, is the future where we'll be targeting these uh, possibilities um, and also looking at potential viremia. And now it's important to sequence our isolated viruses to actually determine were these incidences of recrudescence or actually superinfection. And all of these parameters together, multitude, as Anna will describe, will then be taken into account to be modeled into a bigger picture. So I thank you for your attention and the opportunity. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Really interesting. And you you wrote questions, so if someone has any questions, please. That's just what we're finding with the buffalo. This is a herd, obviously, that we are, um, we've concentrated our studies on over time. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, we, I know previously we have found that buffalo do have these uh, waning maternal antibodies at a similar period that has been in the literature like that before. But um, <coughs> why there are differences to the others, I don't know. Infection that when the set one and the set three go up at the same time, uh, would you consider that part of that was cross reactivity? Cross to the other sets or to, to the other set? It is possible, yes. yes okay. um, that's why we've tried to look at the very high titers and try to kind of um, be careful about looking at the, 
the sort of one to 1.6 to 1.9 range of animals that are reacting to that. But yes, it is something we will need to, to check. Difficult to, but, but I think the sequencing and the virus isolation will help with a lot of those. Other questions? Thanks, Catherine. Uh, very interesting. Um, I'd, I'd just like to make a comment about one of your presumptions based on the paper by Condi and Hedger many years ago showing that uh, vi the virus persisted in an isolated population for 24 years. I think one must take that one with a pinch of salt because um, I happen to have visited that uh, isolated population which was on an island in Kariba known as 117. And what I noticed immediately was that the border of that island was very close to the shore of the, of the main lake. And John Condy, he was showing me the, the setup, explained to me that buffalo don't swim. And uh, we now know that's not true. Thanks for that. Take note. Thank you. Just um, following on from the comments about the, the Eliza, I mean, uh, you know, your 15-year-old animal, I mean, that does seem odd that you're getting mm -hmm. such a decline in antibody titer over, over a couple of months. I, I, yeah, I think there needs to be some more validation of those, uh, mm. yeah, your pinky one, I mean, what's that? Mm. Uh, that the, the older animal. Levels have dropped in mm. yeah, a couple of months. It's Whereas others seem to... Difficult to understand what mm. that is, yeah, that, that that's biologically no. correct. So, yeah, yeah. The, other, the other assays, I think, are important. Oh, you're right. Other questions? Uh, well, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you.